Okay, this video is about a special problem in cell division called um, non-disjunction, in which uh, cytochromatids or um, tetra tetrads fail to separate during mitosis or meiosis, leading to problematic numbers of chromosomes in cells. So, um, this would have several repercussions, including faster evolution in plants and disorders and things like that. So. For example, um, Down syndrome is caused by trisomy 21, which is when uh, a cell ends up with three copies of chromosome 21 instead of the regular two copies that a diploid cell is supposed to have. How exactly does that happen? Now, there's actually two ways that, uh, uh, um, that this non-disjunction can take place in the, the meiosis, and this is the most common type of non-disjunction that is noticeable. Uh, Non-disjunctions happen all the time during mitotic processes, but in your karyotes, especially the, uh, multicellular karyotes, you may not notice it because uh, normally mitosis is happening in somatic cells. So if a somatic cell undergoes non-disjunction, it probably just dies off and wherever it is in the body or becomes some sort of cancer cell that gets attacked by the body and then you don't see it. But in, when a non-disjunction happens in a gamete cell, and that gamete cell actually ends up fertilizing and becoming part of the embryo, then you see it with disorders such as Down syndrome. Now, how exactly does that happen? So, there are two po points at which disjunction can happen. Fail for the, to the tetras to separate during anaphase 1, or fail of the chromatids to separate during anaphase 2. Either one is called non-disjunction because it's a, a non-separation of the chromosomes in the way they're supposed to separate. Remember that anaphase 1 is supposed to separate the homologs, while anaphase 2 is supposed to separate the chromatids. You see how the homologs separated properly here, but you see how the chromatids separated properly here, but not here. So you can compare the two sides and see how the proper separation is supposed to happen. Now what ends up happening is that if since all of the of the, of the the whole tetrad went one way, this side ends up with more chromosomes than this side. So when the second division takes place, these cells will have an extra copy of a chromosome, and these cells will have a chromosome missing. So these cells are what we call uh, haploid plus one cells, or and these cells are haploid minus one cells. If it happens during the second anaphase, you still make two regular cells because those were not affected by non-disjunction, but the second batch of cells will be affected and you would have only about a quarter of them having this problem. And that, this is actually typically the one that ends up causing Down syndrome because Down syndrome is usually a problem in the female egg production and girls usually uh, perform all of their primary meiosis while they're in the embryonic stage. So basically before the girls are even born, they already did all the meiosis one they're going to do in their lifetime. So we talked about that when we do uogenesis on the other lecture video but that means that it's non-disjunction of this type which usually causes down syndrome but it could be caused on the other side as well now notice that the end outcome is that if this gamete win wins and attaches itself to another gamete that's a regular gamete instead of having a 2n cell you're going to have a 2n plus 1 cell which means one chromosome will be extra now, normally, if this happens in, say, for chromosome 1 or chromosome 2 or chromosome 3 or lots of other chromosomes, it might actually cause the death of the embryo because it causes confusion in the DNA code that causes uh, problems which are irreversible and it usually causes the embryo to be insuccessful and undergo spontaneous abortion or miscarriage. But in um, certain cases, such as trisomy 21, this gene will actually not cause enough problems for, this, for the death of the embryo and you actually get uh, an organism which is not exactly standard you would say right uh, so some examples of that are Down syndrome, Kleinfelter syndrome, uh, Turner syndrome, uh, Triple X syndrome, Edwards syndrome all of these things we talked about when we do uh, mutations in another lecture later in the year so trisomy is when you have three copies of one chromosome. So, for example, if you have chromosome type 1, 2, or 3, and they're supposed to be diploid and have two copies of each, trisomy would be when you have three copies of one. And then you also have monosomy when you have only one copy of one because this gamete is the one that won, and basically then you have one missing, a, a gamete missing from that, that set. 
Also notice that it is possible for your mom and your dad both to undergo non disjunction on the same chromosome and therefore create a situation where the embryo is missing an entire chromosome set. So basically, it's missing the entire chromosome 21. But in most cases, that will cause the death of the embryo and the embryos will not survive. So those things usually don't show up. And if they happen, you don't even realize they happen because the embryo does not survive. Also, notice that as we grow older, cell division becomes problematic and defective and less accurate. So that as the age of the mother or the father goes higher, numb disjunction becomes more common and your chances of having problems like Down syndrome in your baby increase. All right? Um, and there's also a different kind of numb disjunction called polyploidy. All right? And we're going to talk about that on the next slide. So another one of these abnormal cell division processes is what we call polyploidy. And instead of, of nuploidy, when, when you basically have an abnormal number of one pair of chromosomes, so instead of having a pair, you have three, which is trisomy. Instead of having um, a pair, you have one, which is monosomy. In a nuploidy, uh, in polyploidy, sorry, you have the entire chromosome set. Uh, with an abnormal number. So for example, up here in the right hand corner, you see a carrier type showing you that every single chromosome, without exception, is a triplet. And so instead of being uh, two homologs, you have three homologs. So that's what we call a tripoid cell. We mentioned that earlier in the first meiosis video, that sometimes the cells can be triploid cells. And I mentioned it then that it had something to do with uh, plant evolution. So some organisms, including plants, uh, will have an uh, event in which they will create gametes, which are basically non-disjunctive gametes, which one entire set of gametes receive. So when meiosis happens and you have one cell with uh, two types of chromosomes, so let's say, for example, you have chromosome type blue and chromosome type red, and then that cell undergoes the initial meiosis, one cell will receive no chromosomes at all, so that cell just gets no chromosomes. Meanwhile, that cell, which is supposed to only receive half the homologs, will receive both the homologs, and then this will then undergo uh, a second reduction division and become a gamete, but the gamete is actually diploid because of this. And so you actually end up with diploid gametes. Now, if one of these diploid gametes combines with another diploid gamete, you create something that's a doubled version of the original species. And then now you have a new first species that may or may not be viable if, it's so, if it can uh, be fertile, if it can actually produce offspring, uh, which accidentally happens sometimes, you may end up getting a species that is viable. Now, how can, it be, how can this be possible? Like uh, we mentioned that in a nuploidy, one, even one extra chromosome can cause confusion and problems for the cell. But it's some plant cells that actually works. All right. For example, here you have a, a natural strawberry, a wild strawberry. I bet you've never even seen one of these. And because nowadays, through agriculture, polyploidy has been induced in the strawberries. And the strawberries, instead of being the regular diploid 2N strawberries, nowadays strawberries are octoploid or 8N cells, where instead of having two copies of each chromosome type, you have eight copies of each chromosome type. And this all happened through successive processes like the outer polyploidy that we saw here described. Now what this will do is three things. First, it will create more DNA for the cell. And second, it will create more variability too. Basically, instead of having just one version of the chromosome, we have eight versions of the chromosome. So there's more variation. And within the variation, you also have protection because as long as you keep at least one chromosome that has, that has a decent copy of the way that things are supposed to be, you can have seven screwed up chromosomes and that might not necessarily cause a problem for the organism. So by adding these extra chromosomes, you add new changes without necessarily sacrificing the, change, the things which are working out. But unfortunately, this will only work in organisms that can sustain this. And obviously, this can't keep going on forever because eventually the cells will not be able to contain all that DNA inside the cells, especially since cells can't grow up indefinitely. But definitely, polyploidy will accelerate plant evolution. Now, a different version of this, and it gets a little more complex, is called allopolyploidy. And this is when species combine. 
So instead of a new species coming from a combination of two uh, diploid gametes from the same species, this is when two species hybridize or combine. So let's see how that happens. So you see here on, the, on type 1 of allopolyploidy, when a species A, say a species that has four chromosomes, and another one that has six, both do gametes, the way they always, normally do. Now these gametes are not supposed to combine because remember, they're not the same species, so they're not supposed to be crossing. But maybe the pollen of a plant ends up in another one, and you get what is called a hybrid. Now, more often than not, this hybrid, nothing will happen to it. But if this hybrid zygote actually somehow does undergo mitosis and forms a multicellular version of that, um, you may actually end up with a, with a bigger hybrid. Now, imagine that you have this, this uh, hybrid. Let's have, we have three chromosomes from one and two chromosomes from another. Now, if you just keep doing mitosis of this, all you're going to do is copy this over and over again. You're not going to go get anywhere. But if doing the copy, uh, a non-disjunction happens, okay, and instead of getting half the copies one way and half the copies the other, and therefore exactly replicating the cell the way it usually happens with mitosis, if polyploidy happens, when, remember, polyploidy can happen in mitosis as well. Uh, sorry, a uh, no. Um, that is what can happen in mitosis as well. So one cell will get none of the DNA. And remember that prior to this happening, you're going to have to double up the DNA and create chromosomes out of this, right? Or citochromatids out of all of this. But what will happen is that the cell will then double the DNA. But since the, the, the homologs did not separate, or sorry, the chromatids did not separate, so it was a non-disjunction event, you end up with something that looks like paired off chromosomes, but it's really basically the chromatids that did not disjunct properly. And then you end up with a 2N cell. Now, this is essentially paired chromosomes, which is what a diploid cell is supposed to look like. So by combining two gametes that shouldn't exist together, and then following that, so this is already very rare for something like this to happen in nature, for a hybrid to form out of two species that shouldn't be combining together. Well, you think even animals can do kind of things like that. Take the ligand, for example. But if on top of that, while the zygote is being formed during that very first division, uh, non-disjunction happens in all of the, cro the chromosome sets, you might end up having chromatids doubled up in one cell while the other gets none, and you end up with this diploid cell. Now, it's not really two different copies of the same type of a chromosome. It's really the same chromosome twice, right? But still, it basically creates a variation. Now, if somehow this cell then undergoes meiosis and forms gametes, which can, which can reattach to the cells and fertilize and form a viable adult, that means that you, what you actually accomplish is a new species. Because by definition, a species is something that can actually produce offspring. So if this new hybrid diploid thing can somehow uh, undergo meiosis and find another one just like it, or even in itself, and self-fertilize, and create a viable, viable zygote, what you end up, technically, is a new species, because this is a hybrid that can actually reproduce. So as you can see, a uh, successive combination of gametes that shouldn't combine, followed by a non-disjunction event, can lead to the formation of a new species by a combination of two. And this that do, does tend to happen in some unicellular organisms as well as some simple plants. Now, in here you have a different variation of the same process. And basically you have two species. One will, will create a gamete that um, is the same kind of thing that happened up here. So a non-disjunction creates a diploid gamete, so it's a problem. Except this time, uh, what happens is that that unreduced gamete will go ahead and combine with the gamete of, a, of another species, all right, and then ca cause something that's um, half, a, half haploid, half diploid, so like looks a little like a triploid cell. Now, if that subsequently combines again with another gamete from the, uh, so that this process repeats itself, and again a gamete is made, and again it's an unreduced gamete, so not only did you have to have a, a, a non-disjunction here of the entire set, again a non-disjunction of the entire set happened here. And not only did you have to have a hybridization event here, again you have a hybridization event here. If that happens, 
this becomes a completely different species that you created out of merging two species through this process. So as you can see, all three types of polyploidy involve problems or such as non-disjunctions in either meiosis or mitosis or both, and that will create variation that actually generates new species uh, by either combining with what, the same species in, with itself or with other species. All right. So this is the strange process of polyploidy, which actually accelerates evolution in some plants and other unicellular organisms.